Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I will recreate Jane Austen's portraits to see how she might have looked in real life as well as the portraits of her family members. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces I recreate historic portraits to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life and I also untangle their family trees. Plus more on my channel, thank you for watching, subscribe for more historical recreations and let me know in the comments you want to see in real life. It was a harsh winter in 1775 when Jane Austen was born. Her family was part of the landed gentry. Jane's father George was a clergyman and her grandfather William Austen was a surgeon and came from an old and wealthy family of wool merchants. However, as each generation of eldest sons received inheritances, the wealth was divided and George's branch of the family fell into poverty. William Austen who was George's father, married Rebecca Hampson, who would be George's mom and Jane's paternal grandmother. Rebecca was the daughter of Sir George Hampson, a doctor of physic and a baronet. Though little information is of Rebecca, what we do know is quite interesting. Rebecca Hampson was married to William Walter, another doctor of physic, possibly an apprentice to her father. She had three children with him. Eventually, her father died, and then her husband died, leaving her a widow. Things get even more mixed when she decided to marry William Austin as her second husband. She was 34, and he was 27. By remarrying, Rebecca sacrificed her half share in her first husband's property to her son. Whatever wealth William Austin had at his young age accumulated, and whatever status Rebecca had as the daughter of a baronet, their position in society was going to be precarious. This sense of class and financial uncertainty becomes a theme in Jane's future books. Their marriage wouldn't last too long as she would die five years later in 1732 or 33 and then William in 37. The eldest of their surviving children, Philadelphia, was nearly eight years of age. George, Jane's father, was six and Leonora nearing four. Left orphaned, the Austin children were sent to live with their relatives and were financially cared for by a trust their father had set up. George and Leonora went to live with their wealthy uncle Francis Austin of Seven Oaks, and Philadelphia was sent to live with the Freeman family, who were wealthy relatives on her mother's side. Philadelphia would marry a surgeon for the East India Company, moving to India herself. She became an English socialite, with her daughter Eliza and cousin to Jane, even marrying a count. As for Jane's mother, Cassandra Lee, her family can trace themselves back to the barons Lee and Chandos, and in the century previous, her ancestor Sir Thomas Lee was the Lord Mayor of London when Elizabeth I became queen. Cassandra Lee, the daughter of a clergyman, was a comparatively poor relation, but kept in touch with some of her more wealthy family members. Mrs. Austin wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. We might even consider her a working mother. At Jane Austen's childhood home of Steventon, Mrs. Austin, as well as raising eight children, was something of a farmer, taking care of poultry, running a dairy, brew house, and granary. Jane was born here in Steventon Rectory and was the seventh of eight children in 1775. Prior to that, her father and mother, whom he met at university, took up temporary residence at the nearby Dean Rectory until Steventon was renovated. Steventon was a very happy place full of academia and freedom of thought. Money was definitely a little tight, as Jane's father George, who was the rector of Steventon, only earned about £200 a year, which was quite low. In comparison, a blacksmith or carpenter made £100 a year, and the typical gentry, one to 5000 a year. The mother introduced only a small dowry, so they had to supplement their income by farming, renting their farm, and teaching privately three or four boys in their home. So it was quite a busy place with anywhere from 9 to 20 people, plus 48 servants. With all this commotion, Jane got her first taste of writing, and from age 11, she wrote with great enthusiasm, producing such works as Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. Jane had six brothers and one sister. Her sister Cassandra, like her, never got married. James and Henry both were educated at St. James College, which they got in for free because their mother could claim her ancestor as being a founding member of the institution. 
James became a clergyman, and Henry, also the same, except he first tried to become a soldier and a banker, but neither of those worked out. George was sent to live with a local family because he was born with a disability. As a result, he was deaf, mute, had fits of rage, and convulsions. Charles and Frank served in the Navy and both reached the rank of Admiral. Finally, Edward was adopted by his father's cousin who had no children, Thomas Knight, inheriting Knight's estate and taking his name. In December 1800, George Austin unexpectedly announced his decision to retire from the ministry, leaving Steventon and moving the family to Four Sydney Place in Bath. All the sons moved out by now, so while retirement and travel were good for the elder Austins, Jane Austen was shocked to be told she was moving 50 miles away from the only home she had ever known. It was here that Jane was either too depressed or too busy to make notable strides in her literary career. She did receive one proposal during this time from a childhood neighbor. However, she refused. Even though he was wealthy and could provide for her family, she did not love him. Then her father died in 1805 and the family's personal circumstances worsened. What was her mother and sister to do? Well, Jane's brothers pledged to make annual contributions to help support them. So for the next four years, they were renting in Bath. And then they moved to Stanford Cottage in Worthing, Sussex. Then a year later in 1806, they lived with her brother Frank. 1809 fortunes would settle though when brother Edward offered them to stay in a cottage on his estate, Chawton. It is here that they spend the rest of their days. Mrs. Austen enjoying her garden and Jane writing her final novels. It was a very quiet life with little entertaining, unlike their days in Steventon. In 1816, age 40, Jane fell ill, possibly Addison's disease or Hodgkin's lymphoma. She went to live near the doctor, but her condition worsened and she died in March 1817, age 41. You see, Jane experienced wealth by visiting many great houses of successful relatives. She absorbed the stories of her prominent ancestors and cousins, but she also got to see people much poorer than her and experience a sense of poverty herself. It is not hard to see where she gets her inspiration from for her many novels, because her life was full of ups and downs, living in the shell of richness, all the while trying to save a reputation and mannerisms. And that's just a little bit about Jane Austen. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more historical recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.